to the October 15, 2014, Town of Atherton City Council meeting. Can I have everybody stand for the pledge? to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can I have a call for Council Member Whitmer? Here. Council Member Lewis? Here. Vice Mayor DeGolia? Yes. Mayor Wiest? Here. We have presentations. Yes, uh, the first ones are the uh, police chief. Okay. Honorable Mayor and members of the Council, ladies and gentlemen, it is my extreme pleasure tonight to introduce three new employees to the Atherton Police Department in the town of Atherton. And I'm extremely excited about getting all three of these individuals on board. They're outstanding. Uh, each and every one of them, and so really glad to have them here. I'd like to introduce, we have two police officers, Jeff Brickle and Jason Goldendorf, and then we have dispatcher, Christy Pasutro. So I thought I'd read just a little history of each one of these new employees. Uh, first, I'll start with uh, Officer Jeff Brickle. Uh, Jeff is a 20-year veteran with both the Hayward and San Jose Police Departments. He was a sergeant of police, served in patrol as a patrol officer, field training officer, and was a member of their rapid uh, patrol team. He managed the field investigative unit within the district attorney's office. He worked as a burglary detective, a pawn shop coordinator, served as a child abuse and background investigator. He was a police academy instructor, attack officer, and a training coordinator for police training. He is also trained in both the theory and concept of crime prevention through environmental design. He has a long list of other accomplishments, but uh, we don't have that much time tonight, so we'll kind of let it go. But uh, yeah, outstanding uh, individual, glad you're here. Officer Jason Bolendor, <clears throat> also a 20 year veteran with the San Jose Police Department, work patrol, FTO, is a bomb technician. And, uh, was a police academy instructor. Additionally, Jason served in the California Army National Guard, where he held the rank of staff sergeant and was a combat signal communications expert. Dispatcher Christy Masutro. Uh, Christy recently went through a very competitive testing process and background investigation for dispatcher with our department, and she did extremely well, which is why she's standing here before you tonight. <laughs> Christy worked as a dispatcher for County Communications with Santa Clara County Sheriff's Department, where she dispatched for law, fire, emergency medical services. Christy comes from a law enforcement family as her father. Uh, DJ is here tonight, CHP officer with 20 years, and mother Angie, who works in the jail for Santa Clara County Sheriff's Department. Christy also has three brothers and one sister. She's been studying sociology at the University of uh, San Jose State, and she enjoys the outdoors and going on hikes with her puppy, Moose. Her one-year-old, 90-pound, Weimer, Weimer, did I get that right? All right, I know what they look like, they're beautiful dogs, but uh, when she said it was her puppy instead of caught, was 90 pounds, I said, <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to administer the oath of office to our three new employees. Raise your right hand, please. State your name. Jason Bolendorf. Do you solemnly affirm? Do you solemnly affirm? That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States, to the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion. And that I will and well, and that I will and well 
and faithfully discharge the duties. And faithfully discharge the duties. Upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. Congratulations. Jeff's wife couldn't be here tonight. She's tied up at work, so he asked me to pin his bed. So I'm honored you did that. I appreciate that. I'm honored as well. Thank you. Sabrina, and we have DJ and Angie. Yes. And DJ and, and yeah. <laughs> I have two adult sons, Aaron and Evan, who are both away at college, and my wife, who works for Google, has a conference all week, and she just wasn't able to get one. So oh. We're extremely pleased to have you on the force. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank Mike, it's my pleasure. Yeah, welcome to DC. Thank you very much. Um, to that award. 
And then throughout the report, we kind of capture just one highlight from the four main strategic goals that um, frame the work that we do. And so under community engagement, we are highlighting the Tricycle Music Fest. Um, last year, we embarked on that, and that's really to celebrate families in our communities and promote music and song and literacy through all of those um, wonderful activities. Uh, Atherton um, had a good attendance last year, and we're pleased to present another concert, which will be Saturday at 2 o'clock, so hope you can join us for that. Um, under collections and services, we highlighted both our expansion of digital collections as well as increasing bandwidth. So we not only increased ebooks, we now have over 60,000 ebooks for the public to check out, but we also implemented three new services, um, digital collections uh, that include downloadable audiobooks, downloadable music, and um, downloadable magazines. Um, not in this fiscal year, but we've just started down, um, downloadable movies as well, so you'll hear more about that. We also moved all of the libraries to a new network that will allow us, um, we're still purchasing some of the equipment that we need, but it will allow us to provide one gig um, connectivity to all of our uh, community libraries, so that's pretty exciting. Under desti destination libraries, we um, highlight San, uh, San Carlos, that library was remodeled, but certainly there's a lot of projects, including the one at Atherton that's um, underway, so there's been a lot of work to improve library facilities. Um, under organizational culture, we continue to strive to not only retain and um, recruit um, and keep our staff up to date, but um, to uh, provide excellent customer service, and our ratings are very high. Um, throughout the strategic plan, 90% um, uh, customer satisfaction throughout the years. Um, and uh, this is a good time to update you that we are currently recruiting for a new branch manager for Atherton as well. So uh, hopefully we'll have an announcement about that in the next several weeks. Finally, there's a page that just kind of gives kind of a roadmap of where we've been um, and major accomplishments and milestones. Uh, what's not included in this annual report that I did want to just thank you for your support and highlight, uh, and it will be in our next uh, annual report just because of the timing of summer reading, but I did want to talk a little bit about the summer reading program. The library received measure aid funds to revamp that program, um, and not only did all of our libraries participate in moving from a summer reading program to a summer learning program, but there were five libraries that piloted what we called a summer learning camp program. And that was really targeting certain communities and certain kids. Um, in this case, it was second and third graders that were struggling readers. And Atherton Library was uh, one of the libraries that participated in that. So it was a, um, a five day a week, um, eight week program where the kids were provided, we partnered with the YMCA, and the kids were provided over 100 hours of enrichment um, time. They were provided books to create a home library. Many kids don't have books at home. Um, free bus passes, uh, some field trips, and then um, a huge accomplishment for, for us was bringing um, lunch, the lunch program. You know, many kids don't have the opportunity to have lunches during the summer, so we provided that as well. So we're excited to continue that program and um, and learn, and uh, we will be providing a final report to you sometime soon. We're just analyzing and evaluating um, the final numbers with that. Um, so with that, um, I'd like to conclude and just thank the council for your ongoing support, certainly town staff for their support, and the friends of the Atherton Library as well. And now um, I'll turn the title over to Carol. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Nice to see you all. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to thank Elizabeth for uh, having been on our board and being a valuable member of the board. And now Rick has joined us and uh, he's going to be a part of this whole donor committee that we start talking about. Um, so I'd like to update you a little bit on what we're doing with the donor funds and the donor, the donor fund committee. Um, we had a study session back in uh, November 
of 2013 so that everybody could learn a little bit more about the donor funds and how they worked uh, identifying issues and challenges that went with them and uh, some, of, some of the questions that, that arose from various board members and questions that arose from, from members of the cities of Woodside, Portola Valley, and Atherton. So we had a long study session. Following the study session, uh, we agreed that we should form a, do a donor committee. And so we now have a library donor fund subcommittee uh, that consists of a variety of people. Uh, Charles Stone from Belmont, Rick DeGoya from Atherton, Gary Pollard from Foster City, Marianne Derwin from Portola Valley, uh, and I'm also on that committee. And then representing the operations side, uh, Clay Wolfe from Brisbane, Alex Kojikian from Half Moon Bay, Christine Boland from San Carlos, and Kevin Bryant from Woodside. So we have now had one meeting of, of the Donor Fund Committee, and it was pretty lively. Uh, lots of good questions were asked. Um, there was a, a, an interesting debate on uh, what to, how the fund, should the fund stay allocated to the, to the three cities? Uh, Atherton has the, the, the most amount of money in the donor fund, smaller amount by Woodside, smaller amount by Portola Valley. Or should some of those funds, not all of them necessarily, go off and be used for additional hours, perhaps a different, different uh, uh, additional book supplies? Uh, so everybody on the committee offered their opinions, asked questions. Uh, when we have our next meeting, uh, we'll have some answers to some of those questions. But it was a good discussion. Uh, Rick well represented the viewpoint of, of Atherton, uh, especially in light of the fact that you're building a new library and, and, and a new library center. So um, we'll have a second. We met on October the 6th. We'll probably have another meeting in January and uh, keep everybody posted. The, the balance of Atherton at, at the moment is seven million dollars. Uh, there's about ten billion in the total donor fund category. And so with that, uh, we'd be happy to take any questions uh, or, or uh, have any have any uh, advice that you want to offer as we continue figuring out what to do about the donor fund. Anybody have any questions? Mm -hmm. Supervisor Grimm, no questions. Thank sure. you very much. Well, thank you very much for having us tonight. No, thank you very much for coming out. And uh, we look forward to the following reports. And uh, we're very pleased that we participated in the summer program. So we'd like to see how that worked. And the number of that worked. We'd like to see how, we, uh, how many people participated. Beautiful. Thank you very much. OK, let's uh, go ahead and move on to uh, city manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. If you have uh, oh, I apologize. I moved right through. I moved right through. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to make any <coughs> comments related to any item that is not on the agenda? Seeing that, I'm going to go ahead and close public comments. Again, I'm going to bring it right back to George. George. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the, the council. We have the city manager's written report, various departmental reports. The department is here to answer any questions that the council might have on their respective reports. Uh, the only thing I wanted to mention is in this edition of the manager's report, you got an update on the Civic Center project and some of its processing as well as some funding issues. And then some upcoming issues coming to the council's agenda is a review of updates of the town's wireless telecommunications facilities ordinance, which should come to you at the November 5th study session, a review of updates to the town's enforcement permit ordinance, which will also be at that particular study session. Uh, assuming we don't overload that study session with two complicated issues, you might just get one, uh, just because they're both rather involved. Approval of a request for proposal for architectural design scheduled for the November 19th meeting, but it might show up at the um, November 5th study session as an action item given the timing. Uh, the bike bed master plan priority projects might show up at the November 19th regular meeting. Uh, the event garden project will show up at the November 19th regular meeting and consideration of changes to the special event permit ordinance may also show up on the November 19th. That concludes the managing report. Any other questions? Does any council member have any questions? Any comments for George? Wow, George, you got through it. No, uh, what? Thanks, thanks George. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to the consent calendar. Uh, is there anybody from the audience that is interested in putting any item number 8 through 16 that is on the consent calendar? Seeing nobody, is there any member of council? 
Is there any member of council that would like to pull or talk about any item number 8 through 16 on the consent calendar? Council member, Vice Mayor. Uh, item number 16, okay. which is the art in public facilities policy. This is a policy that we are adopting, and as part of the policy, uh, there is discussion about the type of art that we would want displayed, and uh, the policy states that it would be consistent with the moral world, with the common moral standards of the community, which I think is good. And in a section at the end titled Town Acquisition of Art, the last sentence reads, in being the responsibility of the council to preserve and improve the character of the town, there shall be no prior constraints on the type of work that may be recommended for acquisition. And I would like to recommend that the city manager include, and if he can do so then, I don't need to pull it, uh, a qualifier in that sentence that qualifies uh, the art being uh, any art so long as it is consistent with the common moral standards of the community. Just basically adding that same yeah. sentence from above down at the conclusion of that sentence. That shouldn't be a problem. I'll agree. Yeah. And the budget as well, obviously. Yeah. We wouldn't likely go out and buy a bunch of rent. Oh gosh, no. I believe this all goes through the ADA. Well, that might be I think it's a donation. <laughs> I, think it's, I, I don't think it's a purchase. I think it's more of a, yeah. a donation. That might come up as the issue. Well, it's acquisition is the language, and that it covers donations. Yeah, that, that's interpretable, right? Like possession, too. Right. So, but I think an acquisition would have to come through the council. Right? Yes. So, so Picasso, I remember. Uh, <laughs> maybe consider it. Yeah. All right. Any other council member want to? Make any comments related to the item that's on the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. Seeing none, uh, can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda, agenda yeah. items? Number yeah. Yeah. Can Sorry. I get a second? Okay. Any further comments? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So let us go ahead and move on from the consent agenda to uh, opening the public hearing, items number 17 to 19. Item number 17 is the adoption of the initial study negative declaration and approval. The draft 2014-2022 housing element update for transmittal to the California Department of Housing and Community Development. I'm taking Lisa Custody. Thank you. Uh, the Planning Commission at its September 16th meeting reviewed the draft housing element and they recommend that the City Council approve the housing element for transmission to the State Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, they would then provide their review if there's any comments that would come back to the Planning Commission if we need to make any changes, then the Planning Commission would adopt and recommend that to the City Council for adoption as well. Um, I have Josh Abrams from Gary Driscoll here this evening. He's our consultant that prepared the document. Neil and I both reviewed it. Um, and I'll have him give a brief overview of the draft housing on there. Thank you for the opportunity to present. Um, I'll start with a quick overview of what is a housing element. Do we have an advanced way to advance the slides? There we go. It's a, it's a lo basically it's a local housing plan. It's an opportunity to talk about what are the housing needs in the community. It's part of the general plan. It's a little different from the other parts in that it's required by the state. But I think the point is that it's a local housing plan. And although we do have to send it to the state and have it certified by the state, the goal is to make sure it meets local housing needs. Throughout the process, we tried to, the, the, our marching orders were minimal changes that housing was working well and the last housing element was recent, so don't look for wholesale changes, just a smooth and efficient process to meet the obligations and respect the character of, of applicant. So what must the housing element do? It starts by looking at what, what worked and what didn't in the previous housing element, which was adopted in 2009 talk about the housing needs of the community. It sets goals, policies, and programs that what you accomplish over the next eight years from 2014 to 22. Um, it looks at making sure there's adequate sites in the community for, for new housing. The new housing doesn't have to be built, but there does have to be at least enough land there. Look at potential constraints, conduct outreach. We've done a fair amount of outreach. We held a meeting last year, two planning commission meetings, an article in the Atherton letters to over 40 organizations. 
Um, so we've tried to do, be very thorough with that. And of course, there'll be more opportunities to talk with feedback as well. And then it's updated. It, it'll now be eight years, so you won't have to worry about it again until 2022. So there's a few things that the state makes us do, but most of it is, is local. And then the, the real take home message is uh, the next slide. It's a, that it's a minor update and it's not, there's not very many changes. We'll go over the, the changes. So specifically, we updated the numbers, the demographics and the, the housing statistics. So using the latest data we, we have, changed the constraints. The constraints talks about the price of land and the, the new building codes and fees. So we updated those. And then change the policies and programs. Most of the policies and program changes have to do with um, just things that we said we would do that we accomplished. There's only one or two, it's really only one area that we, we identified a new program. I'll talk about that in a second. Real quickly, the trends. I don't think there's any need to go into super in-depth because I think people have a sense of after 10, what the demographics are like and the, the, the statistics bear that out. Um, the population's not changing. One thing that is changing is we're seeing baby boomers. A lot of people in Africa are baby boomers, and they're getting older. So we saw um, we saw a growth in the, the in that 60 to 74 age age group. Um, overall, the next slide. Overall, the the housing market's healthy. Prices continue to rise. The last housing element we put in some incentives for second units, and they're working. We're getting six to seven second units a year now. Um, and then population is, of course, wealthy, but there are there are there's pockets of poverty or there are people who are struggling to make ends meet. It's some, I think, seniors who are house rich but income poor, some people who maybe are children of, of a family and they're not making a lot of money, they're living in a guest house or domestic employees and they're not making a lot. So it's about 9% of the population that makes less than 25000 the, the housing need is uh, 93 units over the eight year period. And you can see that it's about two, a little under 200,000 for the region. And that's about 10 more than the last cycle, but it's over eight years, so it's not a dramatic difference in the last, the last cycle. We're gonna meet our need the same way as, as last year, uh, or as last cycle. The, there's a fair number of double lots, and what I mean by that is someone who buys the neighboring lot so they have a little more privacy. And in the state's mind, that person could sell and put a house there, so the state counts that as an available site. Um, faculty and student housing on the, on the college and, and in the school, and then second units also can help meet the need for lower income. Strategic directions, the, the one thing we really heard from the community is people that have lived here their whole lives really want to stay here. So they want to they want they want to explore opportunities how how that can happen and it's different in Atherton than in uh, somewhere like uh, somewhere that, that that has more dense housing so it's, it's a challenge to figure out what is housing for seniors look like in Atherton and rather than rush the discussion we thought it would just make sense to have a policy that said consider this so sometime over the next year we have a policy that Atherton will. Put to, maybe we'll put together a task force, maybe it'll be led by the planning department. It's not that specific, but think about how Africa can meet the, the housing needs of, of seniors. That's the, only, that's the only change. Everything else was just edits. If something was accomplished, we said it was accomplished um, and continued all the other policies. Upcoming events, real quickly. Um, so after we get your feedback and, and any community members' feedback, we'll make edits. It's still a draft. There's some language tightening up and some, some other minor changes like that. Um, we'll send it to the state. The state takes 60 days to review it, assuming they don't have any changes. We're going to do, there's a process called streamline review that the state's doing this year where they only review parts of the housing element that have changed. So that'll make it much easier to get it certified. So we'll, protect, we'll take part in that in a streamlined review. We'll get their comments. If we need to, hopefully we don't even make any significant changes. If we do, we'll negotiate with them. We'll go back to Planning Commission and Council for a recommendation from Planning Commission and adoption by Council. So the, the really the next steps are if there's changes that, that you would like to see in here, it would be great to get them. And then we'll make a motion to bring it to the Department of Housing and Community Development. Thanks, Josh. Um, any questions from Council? Yeah, first off, uh, I guess I noticed 
and as you pointed out, you know, the, the population that was projected at the time of the first uh, uh, housing element uh, documentation and where we are today is, is dramatically, de well not dramatically, but decreased substantially based on where they thought we were going to go be. Um, and, and of course, and as your report also points out, Atherton has already built out. So um, I didn't see in the, in, the, in the document that there would be any sort of recommendation that perhaps that number be re-looked at and re-evaluated. Now, I've spoken with some state representatives, Mr. Gordon, as well as Senator Hill, and, and they believe that that's a, a relevant thing that we should be pushing for, but we should also be identifying in our updates. Um, why didn't we do that? So I think that's a, it's a good point. It's frustrating. I think there's kind of two points in there. It's frustrating that ABAG is, has an inability to get the projections right for Atherton. Um, so that's one level. Then the other level is kind of general, making sure the housing element process is meeting the needs of, of the communities. Um, if, if there's a policy that, that, I guess mostly we didn't get direction from the community members to have that policy, but if there's a policy that the council wants in there, we can do that. I should also say that, that San Mateo County is a little different in that the, rather than have ABAG assign that number to all the cities, all the, the cities and towns got together and formed a, a sub-regional agreement and the, they got a county-wide number of what was needed and they agreed among themselves about how to spread that, spread that county-wide need number among the different cities and towns. So I think that makes it actually a little better and a little more reflective of reality and accurate because the cities and towns actually understand what's going on. But, well, but we also did send a letter to ABAG and the State Department of Finance challenging the numbers as well and, and tried to give them some past data that shows that we are not growing in population, we're not growing in jobs. They come up with these projections every year that are so high for average and they're just way off base. Um, so we have submitted that in writing and we've tried to talk to them and have had much success. Yeah, I remember Previous go around, we did get a slight reduction. Yeah, because I remember when the ABAG representative was here, we can point out to them that, that there is not job creation here, that it, you know, we don't have any commercial. So, so the projections on the number of jobs that we'd be creating here in Atherton was also fortunate. So you know, my, only, my only input would, would have been that we would have at least said that you know, the numbers aren't, aren't relevant and, and there's no way we're going to meet those, those growth numbers that they're projecting. And to me, that would have been something that I thought was lacking from the report. The report was very, very thorough and a lot of great information in there, but, but I thought that that was something that was lacking. I just wanted to understand potentially why. Thank you. Any other questions from council? Seeing none. We're going to go ahead and see if there's any uh, public comment on this item. Seeing no public comments, I'm going to go ahead and close public comments, bring it back to council. Any final comments? Please. I'd like to motion, make a motion that we adopt the um, initial uh, study of the NAIC declaration and approve the draft 2014-2020 housing element update for transmittal to the California Department of Housing and Community Development. Uh, do I have a second? Been presented. I have a second. Any further discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. There's a second portion. That's out. I think we got it all in one motion. Oh, we got it all in one motion. I heard it all.